The latest trailer for God of War Ragnarok has reignited the world's interest in the story of Kratos and Atreus. One of the most interesting additions found in the trailer is the reveal of Tyr, the Norse God of War. From what's been shown, Tyr is essential to the story of God of War Ragnarok, and as such, I thought it'd be a good idea to learn more about this tragic tale of a God of War that was nearly broken trying to find peace. In actual Norse and Germanic mythology, Tyr is always depicted as a deity of glory and war. Epistemologically, we have the day Wednesday in our English language as a namesake for Odin. Not to be outshined, we have the day Tuesday for Tyr. He is the son of Odin and is seen as a being that uses guile and intellect in order to bring about justice. He is most famous in the Icelandic story where he loses his hand to Fenrir, the wolf giant who was chained in order to stop Ragnarok. In the story, Tyr tricked the wolf into bondage and placed his own hand into the wolf's mouth to give the beast a sense of ease. As this magical rope created by dwarves began to tighten and tighten, Fenrir rended Tyr's flesh and he lost his hand. In the God of War series, Tyr has an incredibly long shadow. He is also depicted as the son of Odin, half-brother to both Thor and Baldur, and he is considered a god of war, but as Mimir explains, his interpretation of that title is very different to Kratos's. With power comes a big choice, lad. You can either serve yourself or put your godhood in the service of others, like Tyr did. People really loved him, huh? Aye. A god of war, but one who fought for peace. Had a reputation for being heroic and lawful, using his power and knowledge to stop wars rather than start them. So there are good gods. Once in a moon it's been known to happen, yes. Tyr was an essential figure in the latest God of War because he allowed Atreus to see an alternative to what supreme god powers can do to the weak. And I think he also helped, even though he wasn't on screen, Kratos soften his position a bit on being both a god and doing good in the world. Throughout the game, there are many statues and temples dedicated to Tyr as the much beloved god of war. He traveled through many different realms, even visiting places like Egypt, Japan, and Kratos' homeland of Greece. Whereas Odin hoarded knowledge and wealth to benefit himself, Tyr spread the truth and the people loved him for it. For our purposes though, the most important thing that you need to know about Tyr is what he did on the behest of Odin when he nearly exterminated the Jotnar, Atreus's giant bloodline. So, why was Tyr helping Odin meet with the giant kings? Well, this was when the long war was young, and victory was still a thing dreamed of, and the Jotnar might have tipped the balance between Aesir and Vanir. Odin had persuaded Tyr that the hammer was merely a deterrent, a means to broker peace from a position of strength. Tyr was hopeful to convince all parties they would prosper best through peace. He knew the giants were deeply concerned about the hammer, a super weapon in hands they did not trust. But they trusted Tyr. Tyr always believed the best in people, and taking Odin at his word and his desire for peace, he brought the Raven King to Jotunheim. Uh, from there, things unraveled quickly. The giants anticipated Odin's trickery and exposed his true agenda to spy and steal their secret wisdom. With magic, they expelled Odin from their realm and cursed him never to return. Frustrated, Odin visited his fury upon the giants of Midgard. Thor unleashed Mjolnir's might upon any giant he could find. None could stand against the tide of slaughter that followed. Odin's scheme was enough to break the God of War's spirit, and Tyr decided he would help the remaining giants escape the wrath of Odin. With the support of Atreus's mother Fae, he hid the entrance to the giant's realm out of reach, with only those who could follow his magical breadcrumbs able to find it. Which is exactly, as we all know, what Kratos and Atreus did, picking up those pieces and eventually going to Jotunheim and discovering that all of those giants had sent sadly perished, leaving Atreus, or Loki as he's known, all alone. As for Tyr, 
Odin thought Tyr was a threat for helping the giants escape, and Tyr likely felt responsible for the near extermination of these people and fled with the help of those magical Bifrost eyes given to him by the giants not to be seen again. That was the story until now. In the recent trailer, Kratos and Atreus are desperately searching for Tyr, and they find him. This giant sullen god, still with those shimmering eyes, seems like a distant version of the mighty god described in previous games. But it does make sense. You know, this is a compassionate being, from what we've heard, that is being tortured by the fact that his actions alone led to the demise of an entire people. Had he done nothing, perhaps Faye and the rest of her people may still be alive. I'm willing to guess that if we are going to think about what happens in the game Ragnarok, Kratos and Atreus will try to convince Tyr, this god, to rejoin the fight against Odin and Thor, convincing him perhaps that gods can still do good after doing so much evil, mirroring the redemptive arc that Kratos has been on in this latest iteration. As for how Tyr will affect the game going forward, I do have a theory, and I think it's based on the actual mythology of this character. This version of Tyr that we see in the trailers clearly has both of his hands. As this game is about the event of Ragnarok, perhaps Tyr will fulfill his legendary purpose and use his cunning to capture Fenrir the giant wolf who will bring about the end of time. A lot of trailers show Kratos and Atreus traveling through different realms in this upcoming game, specifically the Dwarven Realm. Could this be a quest started by Brock and Sindri to complete that magical rope that was used to capture Fenrir and the one man who can capture the beast, Tyr? Possibly these are different steps in the ongoing quest that Kratos and Atreus will have to complete to stop the end of time. It's already been established that Brock and Sindri have started creating this magical noose of sorts ages and ages ago, and it's also confirmed that Fenrir does exist in this world. There are some unfortunate inconsistencies in timelines and events, but I likely think that we'll have something to do with time travel here to make everything make sense. I can't imagine that this game's big focus on Tyr won't have us living out, you know, the most glorious legend of this god and his involvement in Ragnarok. What do you think about Tyr? You know, do you, do you buy this idea of a sullen, more sober god of war? How do you think he'll be involved in the end of Ragnarok? And as always, for any God of War Ragnarok videos, I gotta ask, do you think this will be the end of Kratos? Could this be his final moment? Thank you again for listening. Expect more God of War content in the near future. Andy Burkowski here for VGS.